This is a vintage slinky knit jacket or top. It has mother of pearl buttons. It flipped for 22 bucks. Slinky knit fabric is good to know about. Mostly women's clothing and it's mostly vintage. Chico's Travelers is a great example. Chico's, not that great of a brand, but Chico's Travelers has demand for it because a lot of people like this kind of fabric. It's the heavier duty knit, as I said, fabric that does not wrinkle. And I think people like it because as the name Travelers would suggest, you can throw it in a bag and pull it out without having to bring an iron or a steamer to make it look okay and it has kind of a formal look. So vintage slinky fabric pieces, I tend to just pick up when I find them at the bins now. This is a pair of cinch jeans that had some whiskering on them. That's what this is called. These, uh, the light streaks, that's called whiskering. And it does not necessarily diminish value. Um, it had some pen markings on it and it was a very strange size, which I didn't catch when I bought them. And that's something to look out for with jeans pants is are they a weird size 27 by 38 is extremely uncommon for pants um, and sometimes you'll find jeans that are dramatically hemmed you'll find um, pairs of jeans I think it's for for guys who are like shorter guys like you'll find jeans that are size 38 waist and the inseam will only be 27 inches and it's aftermarket, it's hemmed by a tailor. And for some reason, I just, it never occurs to me in the moment to screen for that and it always catches me. And a lot of the time it's the really valuable jeans, like the Versace's and so on. And they end up sitting in those thrift stores because people try them on and they fit like shorts. That was, not the case here, but I didn't catch that it was 27 by 38. So anyway, the nutshell there is it did eventually sell, uh, but it sold for 21 bucks. It sold in a bundle with something else that I'm about to show you. And it took uh, an unusually long amount of time for cinch jeans to sell. Usually these just fly right off the uh, proverbial shelf. It sold in a bundle with this hoodie. That is Phase Clan, which is a social media phenomenon they are a group of video game streamers who have their own merch. This had a hole in the sleeve, a lot of pilling on the fabric here. Still flipped for 25 bucks in that bundle. And if you find FaZe Clan stuff, which I have a few times, it's really not very common, but every time that I've found it, it's sold quite quickly. This is a pair of Hylite shorts that was a very quick flip. I think in two days or less, this sold. Um, and it sold because we're at the midpoint in June, July 4th is coming up. I assume that's why High Leech Shorts used to be a phenomenal quick flip item. These days, it does take a little bit longer to sell them. I do still pick them up because it's not that common of a brand. You will be able to identify it potentially because the fabric is really nice. It feels like Lululemon fabric. It's that mid thick weight, thick weight, mid weight, thick, soft, pliable, athletic type fabric. This is a Super Bowl shirt. It is not vintage, just a basic shirt from Reebok. Flip for 10 bucks. It was sitting up there for, I don't actually remember how long, probably a couple months at least. This is obviously a tie-dye shirt. It's from a brand called Koala, K-U-W-A-L-L-A. -A. It's a Koala T. Not a whole lot of comps on eBay for this brand. I don't know if it was the brand that sold it or the tie-dye pattern. Tie-dye is hot at the moment. Did flip for 19. I think the brand had something to do with it. Designed in Canada. It's really not a very common brand. This is the first time that I've ever seen it. Haven't seen it since. Um, but it might be a good bolo. Might be worth double checking on. This is a Torrid top. Torrid is a great Poshmark brand for women. My friend Mick, who was my really co-host on that whatnot auction, sells all kinds of torrid stuff on Poshmark all the time. And this had a hole in it, but it had these metal studs on the shoulders that made it pretty unusual. And with that knit fabric, I don't think that was quite as big of a deal, that hole flip for 16 bucks. You may recall this from a haul video. I anticipated this flipping very quickly and it did. I listed it for, I think 40 bucks. Sorry that I'm going supernova here. It's a bright day today. Um, flipped for 30 bucks. It was covered in stains. I think it had a couple holes in it too. But it was from the 80s. No, 1978. So very vintage. Had single stitch on the sleeves. 
30 bucks. And this flipped quicker than I even thought it flipped. Uh, I think within 48 hours. This is a pair of floral Forever 21 shorts. I think they were viscose or something. Uh, just flipped for five bucks. Just wanted to be rid of them. Oh, they were 100% polyester. I do not recommend picking this up unless you find it for free or maybe like a buck or less for Forever 21 in pre-owned condition if it's not something really special. This is a basic Eddie Bauer button up. It is vintage and it had kind of a heavier canvas type fabric. It's a nice shirt. I like Eddie Bauer clothing a lot. I wish that it sold for a little bit more. It had some, I guess that's technically whiskering on the hem there, 15 bucks. Demand is okay. Uh, this is a perennial favorite for me at the bins, especially something like this that has a lot of life left in it. And um, happy with it, 15 bucks, pretty good. This pair of basketball shorts from Nike flipped for 10 and as it sat in the bin waiting to sell, it developed dry rot. And that's where you pull on the waistband and the elastic components kind of snap, crackle, and pop. And it loses its elasticity in the waist. So I sent the guy the shorts and I DM'd him on Poshmark, which is an option now. And I explained to him what happened. And I said, if you get it and you're not happy with it, just let me know. I'll release you from your obligation to pay for it. Do whatever I can. Um, but he gave me a five-star feedback and didn't respond to the message. So all's well that ends well. Wow, that is really bright. And now I am cast in shadows. This was the boob access shirt that was not at all a boob access shirt. This is a men's baby carrying t-shirt. I'm sure there's a better term for that. Uh, the dad shirt from Lalaboo or Lalaboo. Huge bolo here. This is a totally great brand. These shirts sell for between 30 and 50 bucks in pre-owned condition. The demand is through the roof. And this is the kind of thing that you're probably likely to encounter from time to time, because why would you hang on to a baby carrying shirt if your kid is no longer a baby? And this was in fact so popular that I sold it here and then somehow neglected to take it down off of my eBay page and it sold there subsequently and I had to cancel the order, which usually doesn't happen anymore for me. It happened a lot when I first started cross-listing to Poshmark um, and I cross-list by hand. I don't have inventory management or cross-listing software that I use. So every once in a while, something will slip through the crack, but wasn't catastrophic. This is a really good Bolo brand, Katmandu. I don't know if this is redundant with my last what's old video so this will be the last one from Poshmark. Uh, 31 bucks it's a performance merino wool top or base layer long sleeve shirt. I love 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 finding brands like this and finding especially performance merino pieces from brands like this to sell because it's just bowling with the bumpers on. You can basically do no wrong. If you're willing to price it down you can still flip it even if it has holes in it multiple holes. If it has small stains it will still sell. And this was in pretty good shape. Poshmark sales have been deadly slow for me um, to the point where I'm contemplating putting the cross listing on ice for a bit to see if something changes up with the algorithm or if sales bounce back because sales have been depressed pretty dramatically on Poshmark for I think most Poshmark sellers. And there's ways to game the system. There's people that are still having good success with it. And you know, this is nothing to sniff at. Still had some good sales, but um, I'm just, I'm, I'm on the fence about Poshmark at this point. Um, when I make a decision, I'll, I'll let you know about it. Definitely not giving up on eBay, still having some pretty good success. I had a, a few great sales days. It's like this, um, my attention on eBay has been divided. I haven't been hitting it as hard or as consistently as in the past, but have had some good sales. This is a pair of Nautica swim shorts and look at the wood background. This is one of the reasons why I almost never touch Nautica anymore unless it's something vintage, um, especially color blocked button up shirts. I, I have done great with those, although I haven't found one in forever. Um, but contemporary Nautica, even 2XL, even with garish print like this and it's in season, this took over two years to sell. Um, so I don't advocate picking up Nautica, contemporary, maybe new with tags, maybe huge sizes, and like I said, vintage. Otherwise, don't expect to flip it quickly at least. This did flip for 16 bucks.
Great little quick flip brand denim and supply from Ralph Lauren is a discontinued line. It's in pretty high demand for that reason. It kind of typically looks like J. Crew type aesthetic stuff. Um, and very, very healthy market for it. This flip for 27, could have maybe juiced 30 out of it, but I just wanted a quick flip on it. Love selling these novels that are tie-ins to popular franchises. This is a video game book, video game novel, quite rare. These like Quake, Doom, Unreal type games have novels attached to them. I know Doom does, I don't know if, I think Quake does too. Anyway, this flip for 38, had it listed for 50, would have had less than a buck into this. Nice little bread and butter flip, a Patagonia basic t-shirt. It is made with Capilene fabric, which is uh, like an insulating fabric and is in a little bit more demand. 28 bucks from a shirt that I would have spent two or three bucks on. Patagonia is not necessarily always a quick flipper, but it is a pretty safe investment as long as you don't grotesquely overprice it. Free People is a women's brand that I will pick up basically 100% of the time if I find it for less than a couple bucks. I think I got this at the bins. 20 bucks, quick flipper, and it was new without tags. That's how I typically list those pieces that just have the loop there, but not the actual tags. And happy with that. Maybe could have gotten more out of it, but I do not care. Turnbull and Asser is a really high-end brand. You find a lot of vintage in Turnbull and Asser, and it's one of the only dress shirt brands that I will spend full retail thrift prices on. I think I had this listed again for 50, took an offer for 36. It did take a minute to sell. Dress shirts other than Untuck It, in my experience, are all longer tail. But I am happy with it, and it had flaws, still sold. Sold this Transformers book for 17 bucks, 25 cents. Not as dramatic a uh, margin as the other book, but another example of a tie-in novel that is in pretty good demand, fetches a nice price, 17, 25. I would have, again, spent a dollar or less on this. Surprise, this didn't flip more quickly. It's a Hemp Blend Orvis shirt. Notice it flipped for 22. Um, Orvis contemporary clothing is is a little touch and go. Vintage Orvis, especially vintage leather Orvis or plaid flannels or vintage Orvis fishing vests are great. Contemporary, it is a little bloated. I don't remember where I sourced this. I don't think that I would spend seven, eight bucks at a retail Goodwill for this piece. I sourced this pair of Spanx new with tags from the La Jolla Goodwill, which is one of the most expensive thrift stores I've ever been to. And for some reason they had this priced at $6. I had it listed for 80 or something. Spanx is a great brand. I did check the sell through and it's not as strong as I remember it being, but it's still a really, really good brand, especially if you can find it new with tags. Columbia PFG. Love to do quick flips on Columbia PFG. We're getting into PFG season, which is fishing season. Well, we're really in it, spring and summer. Um, it's gonna be the, the best demand for fishing clothing. 25 bucks, a lot of people price this stuff up higher. I tend not to because that's my temperament anyway, but PFG is kind of like Patagonia in that most resellers are aware that it is supposed to be worth money. So uh, a lot of supply, there is a lot of demand, but definitely more supply than demand typically. So careful with your pricing. This one was a shocker to me that it took this long to sell. It's a button up shirt from Salt Valley. Salt Valley, I again, haven't found it forever, which is strange because I used to find it all the time. This was in my top 10 bread and butter brands. Um, you mostly find pearl snap buttons. This is just a standard button up shirt and it's in a weird pattern. I don't know exactly why it took so long to sell, but it did, 25 bucks. I still endorse it. I still think if you can find it and uh, it's reasonably priced and in reasonably good condition, you probably more or less can't go wrong with it. A pair of Ex Officio pants. Ex Officio I have designated as not that great of a brand and so it is not, but these long pants, especially when marketed to well, I guess hikers. I was about to say fishermen. 
anglers, but I didn't use those keywords. I should have. This one sold in the rare multiple item purchase from the same buyer, which just doesn't happen for me. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I've heard people say that a ton of their business on eBay is people buying multiple items and I have the multi-item discount in place, but it just doesn't happen with me. Um, 13 and a half bucks for this M&M's tie-dye shirt that I got from the bins. Um, it's a pop culture thing, it's tie-dye, it's a good size, no surprise. And it flipped with this vintage Sick of Sushi art t-shirt, 27 bucks. I got this from a Goodwill for I think five or six. A fairly popular Dead Milkman CD flipped for $21.99. I got this for probably a quarter or so. A lot of you in the comments entreated me to listen to this album before I sold it. I tried it. It is not for me. Um, so it is for someone out there. Skipping over, as always, some of the lower dollar sales. This, I said in a video, was going to be hopefully a quick flip, and it was. This sold within a week. It's a really good brand, Bather, which is a Canadian brand, and there's the tag right there. It was sold by the brand and by that really ostentatious pattern, and it's seasonal. It was just a perfect storm. It was going to pop right away. Had it listed for 40 or 45 got an offer for 35 said yes. Spent like six bucks on this, I think. Um, so be on the lookout for that brand. That's going in the manifesto. This shirt was in a video about how to source stuff to offset the cost of personal shopping when you're out at the thrifts. It's a seersucker shirt. I've talked about seersucker many times, but that is what it is. You probably recognize that texture, that ruffled stripe texture and cotton fabric. That is seersucker. It's usually going to be in white and a lighter colored contrast, typically like brick red, canary yellow, light blue. This one is navy, which you don't see quite as much. It's a summer specific fabric. It's going to be in really high demand across most brands in the summer. If you find vintage seersucker in known brands, especially Brooks Brothers, it can be worth really good money. This is a good brand to know also. It's a not very common, I think, designer clothing brand. Um, using my expert eye to gather that it is a New York-based brand. Um, first time I've ever found it. It has this spread collar. I think that's what that's called, that weird flat thing. Maybe there's a specific name for that. I'm not actually that strong with the collar keywords. Uh, I think that is spread collar. This sold right away. This sold overnight after listening it, which was a surprise to me. Oxford clothes can be worth some really good money, but typically it's long tail. Um, I had it listed for 125 and it sold for 100 Someone sent me an offer. And it is recent. That's a very recent tag. Um, and recent in suits and jackets is typically a good thing. Pair of Prana jeans. I think this pair of jeans had a bunch of stains on it, which is why it took a while to sell. Yeah, it had bleach spots on it uh, here and here and yon, hither and yon. And it has something going on in that, in the cool area of the jeans. Still flip for 22 and a half bucks. If you find Prana jeans in better condition, they'll sell for more, definitely. They're, I think, to my recollection, one of the categories that's, that's really celebrated in Prana. Basically, everything Prana I have found, except for men's button-up shirts, sells quite well. Um, I used to be more trepidatious and measured when it came to Prana, but these days, especially if I find it at Ben's automatic pickup, if I find it out at retail thrifts, if it's reasonable and it's not one of those button-up shirts, I will probably get it. This is not a big blowout item. It's only a 15 buck item, but I included it in this video because we're in golf season. So if you find golf clothing for a reasonable price, it's gonna be in pretty good demand, especially in a known brand. Adidas and Reebok and Nike golf shorts have always been pretty consistently good sellers. Um, the, the golf pants, same story. Uh, golf polo shirts, obviously. And the golf shorts will be flat front Bermuda type walking shorts that are made with a performance-ish fabric. I don't know exactly how to describe it. It's like a cross between chino material and athletic, like actual performance fabric. And it'll typically be a solid color. It'll be plain looking like this. 
but don't be fooled by how plain looking it is. Oftentimes these pieces will be in good demand and will go for healthy money. Okay, we have run out of space on the phone as usually happens. There were a bunch of other more bread and butter flips, uh, lower dollar stuff that I've talked unto death on this channel. So eBay is still going fairly strong. Obviously Whatnot is doing great. Um, a lot of people have misgivings about Whatnot. I only wanna make two points. One, yes, I'm aware that I have a big social media presence. I'm not an idiot. Um, I'm aware that I have an advantage in that way when it comes to whatnot. I still think that you have an opportunity to make some really decent money. Also don't, uh, I would just caution you not to leap to conclusions that it's a flash in the pan thing or that it's trivial in some way or that it is, just don't, don't talk yourself out of giving it a fair shake. No platform is perfect, but I think you're maybe selling yourself pretty short if you just dismiss it out of hand. More videos coming soon, and my follow-up whatnot auction is this Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific. I have a ton of stuff. This one's gonna be focused a little bit more on bottoms, pants, skirts, shorts, um, and I've bought a bunch of vintage stuff to throw in there too, like vintage t-shirts and jackets and, and whatnot. Um, so there'll be something for everybody, I think, Friday at five. My username on whatnot is the same as here. It's thrift to life, all one word. Okay, thanks for watching and see you there or not. Thanks.